Hello there. I'm here to talk to you today about Dave Asprey's new book, Fast This Way. If you've ever been curious about fasting before but didn't know where to start or it just seemed too daunting, then this is the book for you. What you can learn in this book can be broken down in just to a few categories. One would be the benefits of fasting, obvious. Two would be the types of fasting, so different ways to do it. Third would be exercise with fasting. Fourth would be supplements with fasting. And the last category would be differences for women. I'm gonna give you just a quick overview of each of these categories. So if any of them pique your interest, please check out the book itself for more information, or I have a, an overview written down on my website too, and I'll leave links below for both of them. With all that said, let's get started. Benefits of fasting. There are many benefits to fasting, but there are three particular outcomes that stand out to most people. The first one would be regulates insulin levels. So through daily intake of food, our body sometimes gets overwhelmed with producing insulin and regulating our body that way. This is especially true when we consume low quality processed food. So that being said, fasting is beneficial for both quote, healthy people and non-healthy people. So don't use that as an excuse. Number two, would be triggers autophagy. If you've never heard of this before, it's our body's process of breaking down dead cells and cell parts, and it's very important for our health. When we fast, it becomes a lot easier for our body to do this job. Number three is help to burn fat. This is probably everyone's favorite outcome from fasting. When our gut bacteria are deprived of food, they produce a hormone called fasting-induced adipose factor which instructs our body to stop storing fat and instead burn the fat. Nice. A note before we move on. You should never try fasting if you're pregnant or trying to be pregnant, and it is not a good idea to try it if you have a eating disorder. Please consult your doctor if you want to try something like this and follow their instructions. Different ways of fasting. In Dave's book, he mentions that there's more than one way to successfully fast. The obvious way is to simply go without food for longer than normal, maybe even water. Another form of fasting is called intermittent fasting, and that is when you simply wait longer to break your fast in the morning. The most common form of intermittent fasting is when you fast overnight while you sleep, and then you wait longer than normal to eat breakfast. And for most people, that's between 12 and 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Dave has a bulletproof version of intermittent fasting, and it's when you fast overnight like usual, and then for breakfast you have what he calls a bulletproof coffee. This is when you take black coffee and you blend it with grass-fed butter and MCT oil, or coconut oil if you don't have it. As long as you do not add carbs or protein to your bulletproof coffee, then these healthy fats will fuel you during the morning, but will not break your fast. So you will still be in ketosis and still getting the benefits of fasting. Dave also mentions that you can fast from other things such as drugs, alcohol, or social media even. A lot of people struggle with these things because they're addictive and it's a lot easier to tell yourself to take a break from something than to never do it again. So you can use this time to heal, to reflect, and see if you even need the thing anymore that you're fasting from. Whatever fasting cycle you decide to take, just make sure you do not fall into complacency. Our bodies work best when we keep it alert. Otherwise, our cells get lazy. Exercise and fasting. If you're on a multi-day fast, Dave suggests that you simply go on a 20 minute walk every day instead of a full out workout. Your body at this time should be focusing on repair and not building new muscle. If you are intermittent fasting on the other hand, then exercise can be a good idea. Dave suggests that you try a HIT or a high intensity interval training workout. These are much more effective at building muscle and enhancing your physical health in general. He says to do this right before you end your fast for the day. So for most people, this is between one and two o'clock. If your goal is to build muscle, he also gives another tip. He says to try taking a supplement called L-glutamine. You can take anywhere between two to 10 grams of the stuff. This is an amino acid that is good at building muscle. Take this right after your workout and before you start eating for the day. Just note that taking this supplement will break your fast, so if you were planning on staying in ketosis, then don't take this. Also, never exercise before you go to bed. It will harm your sleep quality. Supplements and fasting. This is a rather beefy chapter, so I'm not gonna delve deep into this. If you wanna read more, go to my website again or check out Dave's book. There are four vitamins on this list that you should take with caution if you're fasting. Dave calls them the Barfi Four. 
they cause nausea. The first one on the list are B vitamins, especially B complex. Some people can handle B12 with folate and nothing else, but try it yourself and see. If you don't feel well after taking it, wait till you break your fast. Multivitamins. These often contain low quality forms of particular supplements, plus they usually have B-complex, so same problem as above. Fish oil. Now these require fat to digest, so you can take it with Bulletproof Coffee. If you're not going the Bulletproof Coffee route, just wait till you break your fast. Iron or multi-mineral supplements. These will likely cause nausea, acid reflux, or both. Most people can handle single minerals such as magnesium or zinc, but not so well when they're formulated together. And then for the rest of the vitamins that you should consider while on a fast, I'm just gonna leave them in a list for you, either here or below, for you to check out on your own. I have them all listed on my website, and Dave's book has even a few more that I didn't include on my website, so take a look at both of those. Differences for women. All right, this is the last segment, so you're almost there. I just wanna point out that women are just as capable as men as achieving fasting and all of its challenges, perhaps even more so in certain cases. Determination, though, does not change our biology. So if you're looking for the best health results out there, then you gotta pay attention to your body. I'm sure you can guess what the main difference is with women. We grow babies, right? Whether or not you want children, our bodies prioritize our reproductive health over our general health. If your reproductive system is in jeopardy, chances are you have other health problems. Dave gives us women a few helpful tips to make sure that we're getting the most out of our fast without hurting ourselves. Number one, do not fast too long or too often. Too much stress on a woman's body will signal that it's not safe to have children. This will mess with your hormone levels and cause other problems. Many women do better intermittent fasting only every other day while having protein and fat for breakfast on the off days. Some women do even better when they eat normally all week and only have a one 24 hour fast once a week. If you've tried daily intermittent fasting and it's not working for you, perhaps try one of these two methods. Number two, women are more sensitive to carbs than men. Dave recommends that women have carb refeed days more often than men. Men tend to do well with eating carbs only once a week or even less. Most women do better when they have low to medium amounts of carbs every dinner in contrast. Make sure you choose high quality carbs, such as sweet potatoes, carrots, squash, and white rice. Number three, if you crave fatty, salty foods, this could be a sign of adrenal exhaustion, so do not ignore. If you feel this way, try drinking some water with sea salt mixed in it, or consume some healthy fats, such as grass-fed butter and avocado, or add some olive oil or avocado oil to something. Just do not ignore. And number four, get your iron level tested. Having too high a level or too low a level are both bad, so it is not wise to take a supplement without knowing your level. If you do get your level tested, test for ferritin specifically. This level will tell how much iron your body is storing. Well, there you have it. A quick overview of Dave Asprey's new book, Fast This Way. If any of this has piqued your interest, please check out his book, it's really good. Again, I'll leave a link to the book down below as well as my website if you want to see all this in writing. I also have links to specific vitamins that I take on my website if you want to check those out. All right, good luck to y'all and happy fasting.